Hello again, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, when I was sending my abstract, I think I quite misunderstood a bit the format. I thought it needs to be work that has been done, so finished. Uh, however, I wish I would have loved, uh, you know, I wish I would have been able to talk about my PhD project. So I was thinking, okay, I will try to deliver both. So um, this is my master's thesis uh, that was, um, that I did at the University of Cologne. And uh, I was doing my research on uh, silence practices as uh, language strategies in migration discourse. So the, the project itself was not a migration project, but more it was dealing with the language that was used uh, by people, particularly young people, who, wants to go, uh, who want to go abroad. So that was more or less the, the scope of the, the, the master. So research in silence, I remember each time I had to uh, explain my project to people in Madagascar, they say, oh, I never thought of, why do you research silence? Sounds interesting, but I would never think that you would build something out of it because we had today, for example, a presentation on soundscape, mm -hmm. and uh, silence is, I used to call it non -discur uh, discursive, but I think I was wrong. It's discursive, and that was also the idea of the, of the project, saying that um, silence, even if it's the absence of words or absence of verbal communication, it could convey very interesting messages. It depends on what kind of uh, message the interlocutor uh, wants to convey. And uh, this is obviously an autoethnography because I'm Masa from Madagascar. And uh, uh, how I approached it was um, I started with uh, doing literature analysis of politeness theory, and this is also where I'm starting from. I, I started to be interested in the topic by, um, um, I think I had, I had a lecture course on politeness, and I found it so interesting because Madagascar as a country is having this connotation of being polite, but why, why is it called polite society? I would not debate on that and I would not extend on that, but the reason behind it is because of lots of use of silence in everyday communication. And when people are not saying anything, then it's considered as uh, someone who's accepting, someone who's uh, complying with what you're saying, someone who's valuing it, but it's also, it could be a, a sign of uh, respect to hierarchies and different kinds of um, social structures that is existing. But from my master's thesis, I found out that it's not always by complying, it's, it's not always about accepting or being polite. It could rather be the opposite. It's about being aggressive, being passive aggressive, and this is about being um, arrogant. But this could also be used as a tool to achieve particular goal that uh, usually people who do not have agencies, and I really like the presentation um, t uh, early today about agencies, it's not only about, um, w w when we are speaking about human agencies, it's not about speaking out the words about it, but it's more like how could I combine different kinds of communications, nonverbal communication, gestures, um, sounds, different kind of sounds to express something. So this is more or less where I'm coming from. So this, that's why I was interested in this uh, sociolinguistics setting of uh, silence. So to give you a little bit of an overview of the linguistic landscape of Madagascar, um, it's still highly debated, uh, the, the origin of Malagasy people, because um, in terms of languages, it's a mixture of Bantu language, uh, Arabic lexicons, Malagasy itself, but what does it mean Malagasy? It's, it's very fuzzy still, and, um, but um, researchers have shown that it's from the family of Austronesian uh, languages. Uh, so when I hear somebody from Indonesia, it sounds like something I could understand because the tone is just the same, but I have no understanding of what they're saying. So, 
and also some European locutions that have been adopted uh, through the different exchanges and trading going on in Madagascar for centuries. And then Mazanga is the, the place that I cho uh, chose for, for my research. Well, my two master's thesis actually, but I would go back to that later on. Um, this is a very specific region or area, it's not a region, it's a specific area because people in Majanga, in French, the, the, way, the French are calling it Majanga, it's not, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of different dialects that was molded into becoming one vernacular language. Um, so people from Majanga, they don't, uh, they don't have a specific dialect like in different uh, cities in Madagascar, but they are combining these different people coming there, be it from, from some years ago or even centuries ago, and this is molding what is called the Majenge. And so I cannot call it as a dialect, but it's a vernacular language. So to put up on top of this, you have to be able to understand the Majorengue way of speaking, but then on top of that, the, the way how silence is used. This is not to say that the silence strategies used there is only for, for Majorengue, because in, in the world that we are living now, things are connected. So you cannot single out one situation and say, it's only happening in Majorengue. But I'm just mentioning this because it's very cosmopol uh, cosmopolitan uh, Place. And as you can see on the picture, it's, it's at the seaside, so it's a, the second port city of Madagascar. And it has been always um, a place or a space of exchanges of different people, traders, Arab uh, traders, or people from uh, other part of Eastern Africa. So just to give you a background of what the, what the field is about. Yeah, so it's um, urban studies that I've been conducting, uh, urban, yeah, urban field work. And uh, yeah, this is something I already mentioned. Why I'm having this sketch, this is very present in every single um, research that I've been conducting in Madagascar because it's, everything starts there. It's at the seaside and um, you have different kinds of things going on and you could explore it and, uh, endlessly. So that's why I found it's, it's, it's really important to map it in my head, like, okay, whatever I'm doing when I'm uh, conducting research in Mazanga, I'm, I'm always starting there. By the way, I, I met man, many of my interlocutors there, so I think it's, it's very, very important um, to mention it. So these have been my questions for the master's thesis. Um, the, the context, are how it's used, how silence is used, and um, how it's combined with other language repertoires, and also how is it limiting or enhancing people's chance to, to, be, to have agencies. Uh, so, you know, um, maybe I can speak about one part of the result that I, um, I found is people don't talk about their project because it's really difficult to go outside. So if you talk too much or too early, then it might be that your project is failing because it's not an easy thing to, to go outside, to aspire for transnational uh, mobility. The second thing is also it's, it might be motivated by shame because just in case the project that you have in mind is not working out, people are going to laugh at you. And the third thing is also the fear of envy of, or jealousy, because when you have the idea, Madagascar, as we know, is an island, and it's, um, I, I didn't think about this, but it's through other colleagues that I realized people are very much into international languages. So, I don't know about other countries, but I can speak only from Madagascar that even if people, for example, they have, they finish their uh, baccalaureate, like the high school degree, when they don't want to have a pause. They maybe want, they want to continue to study and to go to the university, but when the, there's a time frame in between, they will learn language, either informatics or languages. 
and most of the time it's language. So it's, it's really, I think it's, it's important to look at that so in every, in every, um, every research that I've been conducting and also by talking to people, uh, it's central to any research that I might be, no matter if it's about social linguistics or something else. So it's, it's very much transnational in terms of language perform, uh, performances. Um, I think I explained this a little bit already. So understanding the linguistic, so this is the procedure that I've been doing. So I had my literature review and then uh, understanding the linguistic landscapes. I'm very, um, I'm lucky because I speak the language and I grew up in Madanga, so I could grasp some, some hints be between the lines when people talk, because as I said at the beginning, Madagascar is considered by some theorists as one of polite society. I mean, I'm always laughing when I hear this, but as I said, I'm not going to, uh, into details about that, but it's more about the, the, the practices of language that is used. So I started with there to understand, to have a, to have a, yeah, connecting the dots with different kind of languages uh, that is used in terms of migration discourse, obviously. And then what are the nonverbal cues that people are using? For example, um, they go to, to, um, to an office that is related to migration. Um, the example that I have in mind is Campus France. Um, so if, if I want to go to France uh, for my studies, I have to go through Campus France, and then I need to calculate exactly what I have to say and what I don't say. And most of the time, it's about performing, of course, because it's a human, this, this human dynamics of uh, I want to have something. It's not necessarily in the manipulative, because it's also part of my master thesis, but just in, for the sake of I need to get something, how could I navigate better? And most of the time, people are being silent in many things, and they say only the important things so that it will not fall back and fire back to them. And uh, yeah, so you have the, um, I also found out that there's uh, what is called positive silence and negative silence. So you, you can ask questions later on, but I, it's, it's so dense that I cannot explain everything because I want to go through to my um, PhD project. Um, so, this is the shaping of silence, I already explained already, you have the power relation between the people and uh, the symbol of respect because people are not supposed to talk back to elder people and for example in parents, uh, children relationship, you are not supposed to talk back but then you are supposed to talk back, it's, 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 it's very, very, um, there's this plasticity of use of, um, use of silence, not only in migration discourse, but also to convey the, the information to the parents, for example. I would like to go abroad, and I need my parents for that. So I need to have the right strategies to convince them to, to fund my studying or to, to support me in what I'm doing. So, this is a little bit packed, but uh, I will go through this. Uh, I started, ethnographic research in Madagascar roughly around 2012 already. So 10 years ago, I already uh, got acquainted with doing ethnography, but I come from different disciplines. I studied law, I studied, uh, I had development studies, socio, uh, sociolinguistics, as I said, and I'm on, in the making of being an anthropologist. I don't know if I could call myself an anthropologist yet. And, um, yeah, the common ground of this is it, it's all about being mobile. It's all about being uh, performing this trans transnationality. And this is exactly the, the, the subject, the topic of my PhD, which is about transnational uh, couples involving Malagasy women and non-Malagasy men, which are French citizen men. Why French citizen men? Because uh, um, men are. I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk only about white men with the prerogative um, designation of white men. But my project is more geared towards racialization. How um, 
how transnational couples have been, uh, there are lots of stereotypes going on with transnational couples. And this is exactly what I would like to look at. And the most important thing is the citizenship, the different citizenship that these couples have. Because I come from silence strategies, which has this uh, implication of power relation, and that I want it or not, or that we want it or not, Behind every stereotypes, there's a little bit of truth. So I would like to look at the dynamic of these couples, but it's not only about the couple. It's, uh, it's about the kinship relations around it. So you have the children uh, who have been born maybe before the relationship and how they relate themselves. So one of the couple, one of the partner relating to their kids or the couple themselves relating to the kids or the, I learned that I should not use the term mixed couple, but just for, to make it short, so the, the, the children issued by those transnational relationships, they are also, um, uh, I remember I, I was presenting my PhD project and uh, there was this um, half Swiss and half Kenyan woman who told me, Oh, Claudine, I could relate to everything you're saying because, you know, when you talk about silence, there are so many things that my parents, my Swiss father and my Kenyan mother is transmitting to me without using a word, but I just know it. And it's, there's no explanation. There's, I cannot put words into this, but there's really something strong going on. And I thought like, okay, I thought I had enough of silence, but now I'm taking it back because it's really important in terms of not necessarily the relation, uh, power relation, but also the, how, you can, how you can relate yourself uh, to two different identities of people. Nobody is the same. It's not about categorization, but the, the main idea of the research project is looking at these transnational performances between this people having two different kind of citizenship, how they navigate with it, and how they relate themselves with the outside world. Uh, by What I mean by that is the, the social circle, their families, but also the people from the outside, how people are considering them. Um, I probably am running out of time now. So uh, yeah, that was it. Um, I would be really happy to hear your comments, your questions. So thank you very much for listening till the end.